Hi there. In this video, we're going to examine how to drive a twist structure in a forearm. Now, there are a variety of different ways to accomplish this task, yet many of them will produce problems in certain situations. Before proceeding, I would urge you to watch my first video on aim constraints if you have not yet, as it provides some helpful background information for this tutorial. Using the information from the first video, we will see how we can create a robust twist structure in our forearm that computes very efficiently and is easily transferable into other 3D packages and game engines. Let's start by looking at a basic human forearm to discuss the problem we're trying to solve. In a basic forearm rig, we will usually have an upper arm bone, a lower arm bone, and a hand bone. Although this is a fairly intuitive arrangement, it also has a key problem. No matter how well we assign skin weights, the hand can do little more than flex and extend without introducing deformation problems. If, for example, we want the wrist to pronate or supinate, then the mesh will collapse at the joint. In an actual human arm, the extension and flexion of the wrist occurs at this point of articulation. However, pronation and supination of the forearm occurs down the entire length of the forearm as the distal end of the radius bone pivots around the ulna. The simplest way to achieve this effect is to create additional bones down the length of the forearm. If each of these additional bones is simply a child of the forearm bone, then our basic setup is still easy to animate with either forward kinematics or inverse kinematics. The vertices of the forearm are then assigned to sections corresponding to each of the bones in order. The vertices on the proximal end of the forearm are assigned to the forearm bone, while those at the distal end are assigned to the final twist bone. The vertices in between are assigned to the corresponding bones in between these two extremes. With this arrangement, we have assigned the vertices from elbow to wrist in order of no twist to full twist. The bones in between the elbow and the final twist bone can now have orientation constraints applied to them. The constraints are weighted between the two extreme points based on how many total bones we have. This is the same as performing a quaternion slurp between our two endpoints if we convert this into code for a game. In this example, because we have two bones in between our extremes, the first one's orientation constraint has a weight ratio of 2 to 1 in favor of the elbow, while the second has a weight ratio of 2 to 1 in favor of the final bone, you can now see that if we rotate the final bone along with the wrist, the forearm twists around its length. Everything that we have discussed up to this point is fairly common practice, yet we must now determine how to drive the rotation of the final twist bone. The most straightforward way to drive this bone is to simply match its rotation about the twist axis to that of the hand. In this example, because my twist axis is Z, we could establish a connection to make the final bone's Z rotation match that of the hand. In Maya, you can do this in many ways, though the easiest is to create a connection using the connection editor. In 3D Studio Max, wire parameters are probably the most effective option. As you can now see, rotating the hand around the z-axis also rotates the final twist bone around its z-axis. Although this appears at first to be an acceptable solution, it is subject to problems associated with Euler angles. Namely, Using Euler angles makes our final twist bone dysfunctional if the hand becomes gimbal locked. A better solution for driving this final bone, therefore, is to use an aim constraint. Using what we learned from the first video, we want our final bone to aim its twist axis, the z-axis in this example, toward the hand and use one of the remaining two axes as its up vector. Because the hand has a fairly wide range of motion when flexing and extending, we do not want to use the hand's palmar axis, the y-axis in this case, to constrain our up vector. If we do, then the twist joint will flip if the hand bends farther than 90 degrees. Because the hand has a very small range of lateral motion, however, we should match our up vector to its lateral axis. In this example, our lateral axes, the x-axis, point toward the character's front. With our final settings, you can compare each of these possible configurations to see how the aim constraint on the top performs perfectly well in situations where the Euler angles break down. Changing the rotation order or gimbal locking the hand does not adversely affect the result. We can now see one very clear example where our knowledge of aim constraints has proven to be a valuable tool. Now that we understand this whole process, we want to save ourselves setup time in the future. 
Those of you using Maya can download the setup for our MEL script from our website. To use this tool, source the script and run the global procedure AM setup forearm to get an option box for inputting information about your character rig. In the option box, use the slider to choose how many twist joints you would like to create. The elbow aim axis field is the axis of your elbow that is pointing toward the hand. The elbow front axis field corresponds to the antecubital side of the elbow joint, which typically points to the character's front in the bind pose. Finally, the hand lateral axis is the axis on the hand joint which points toward the side of the hand with the thumb. Once you have entered the information you want, select your hand joint and press Create to automatically generate your twist structure. You can now create your forearm's twist structure in a single step. As you can see from the rotation axes that I have made visible here, the whole setup has its constraints applied when you create it. This allows you to go straight to skinning your model to these new joints. Thanks again for following along.